Picture this. You're days away from settlement on your new house. You've packed up your boxes, set up your utilities, ordered the moving van. You've even bought the beer for your friends who are coming to help. And then you get an alarming call from your lender asking you if you recently bought some furniture. Well, you're moving. Of course you bought some furniture. Isn't that what everybody does? Here's the problem. That two years same as cash zero interest deal you got from the furniture store just changed your debt ratio and you no longer qualify for your loan. Does that seem far-fetched? Think again. Today we're talking about the worst credit blunders you can make that can keep you from buying a home. So stick around. Hey everybody, it's Brad Cox from the Vesta Group of Long and Foster. Today we're talking about the top 10 worst, most terrible, horrible, and entirely preventable things you can do to your credit when you're buying a home. So when you apply for a mortgage, your credit score can make or break your plans. A good credit score gets you a lower interest rate, maybe even lower insurance costs, and it, it can make the whole loan approval process a whole lot easier. A lower credit score, on the other hand, can cost you a lot of money in higher rates. You might be required to provide your lender with more and different types of documentation, and it can even prevent you from buying altogether. It's really painful to watch clients sabotage their settlement by making entirely avoidable mistakes with their money, but we've seen it happen. Any changes to your financial picture before settlement can completely derail your plans, so watch out for these mistakes. Number 10. Don't change jobs, become self-employed, or, or quit your job. Changes to your employment can cause your lender to think twice about how risky your loan would be. This is not the time to start a new business. And if you're going to lose your job or you need or want to change jobs, definitely talk to your lender first if at all possible. Number nine, don't buy a new car, truck, or van, or you may be living in it. Replacing a car that was damaged in an accident, that can sometimes be handled with an explanation. But if you're trying to upgrade your ride, this isn't the time to do that. Number eight, don't use credit cards excessively or let your accounts fall behind. Make your payments on time and keep your balances as low as possible. Your utilization, that's a common ratio that your lender's going to look at to figure out how much you can borrow. A good guideline is to keep your balances below 30% of your available credit, or lower if possible. Number seven, don't spend money you have set aside for closing. When you talk to your lender to get pre-approved, you get an idea of how much cash you need to close. Buyers sometimes forget, though, about the total, and they think they'll be okay if they just have their down payment. But most often, you're going to need to pay for all or some of your portion of the closing costs as well. Number six, don't leave any debts or liabilities off your loan application. Sometimes borrowers think they should hide issues they know about with their credit. But lenders are going to run your credit report before writing a pre-approval, so they're going to find out about what you owe anyway. Just be open and honest about everything, especially the problem. Good lenders can help you find ways to fix those issues. Number five, don't buy a lot of new furniture for your home, especially on credit. When you're buying a home, it's natural to want to buy the furniture you're going to need once you move in. And furniture companies are notorious for offering these same-as-cash deals where you don't owe any payments or interest for a year or two. But as soon as you agree, they pull your credit and they create a debt for that amount of the purchase that appears on your credit report. So unless you can pay cash for the furniture and still have the cash you need for settlement, wait until after you close. Number four, don't originate any new inquiries into your credit except for getting insurance or home loan quotes. No new credit cards, no new school loans, even applying for new credit without charging anything will change your credit score. Number three, don't make large deposits or withdrawals into your bank accounts without first checking with your loan officer. Say someone in your family wants to help out with your down payment. Well, that can happen, but your lender is going to need a, lend, a letter from that family member so that that amount isn't considered another debt that has to be repaid. Any large deposits have to be sourced with a paper trail, and then any big withdrawals have to be explained. Number two, don't open any new bank accounts. When you move money, you have to explain it, and it just creates extra work for your lender. Loan officers and processors have enough to do to make sure you get to the settlement table without having to track and source 
the changing bank accounts. So make it easier for them and then they can make it easier for you. And then number one, don't co-sign a loan for your brother-in-law's cousin's sister Trudy or anybody else for that matter. Even though you expect the other person to pay back the money, when you co-sign, you assume full liability for that debt and it has to be counted against your debt ratio. Look, any one of these mistakes can tank your loan and keep you from buying. So please follow these guidelines. And if you have any questions about your credit, definitely talk to your lender. If you want to talk about the home buying process or you need a referral to an excellent local lender, just give us a call at 410-821-3122 or email me at brad at homesbyvesta.com. And as always, if you like what you saw, what you saw here today, please like, comment, and share. Thanks for watching.